Welcome to 357's Talking Circles. I'm your host, Garrett Thomas. We're here and we talk um, with racers from the Midwest that race across the states, as well as racers from across the states that race in the Midwest. Uh, if you want to get video access of this footage, uh, go and give us a like and share and follow at at 357WOD, at 357Studios, and at Talking Circles Pod. That's all on Facebook. Uh, for the audio version of this, you can check us out at Talking Circles um, on Spotify. we definitely like to thank our sponsors that make this possible. Chemstream Race Fuels. Use Chemstream, go fast. Also, we'd like to thank ACT Tire and Auto in Flora, Illinois, and Ferris Commercial Lawnmowers. Welcome back to part two of Shane Cochran's interview. We touched a lot on part one with this history. Uh, part two, we're going to jump into uh, to his 2021 uh, plans, his sprint cars, the Silver Crown, and also um, he's going to take us for a little tour around his shop and show us some of the neat artifacts that he has. And uh, I tell you what, if uh, these cars could tell stories, we'd be here all night. Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we pick up on part two with Shane Cochran. Um, coming to us from his museum there, uh, which, uh, you know, we're going to get to show you guys a tour of a lot of really cool cars. Uh, last last episode, we talked a lot about um, what started Shane in, in racing and, and, and coming up with his father and the success he had coming into um, basically coming into full time, just sprints and Silver Crown. Um, so we, we talked a lot about uh, the Hardy Boys. Uh, we left a couple things out because we wanted to jump in on this part two with uh, with uh, starting out his big successes in uh, Silver Crown, as well as we did leave out is your ARCA car run. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, as we talked about in the lapse episode, uh, there was a few years there where, man, you talk about crazy years were running every direction and, you uh, you know, a good friend of ours who was local and had an ARCA team, uh, Brad Hill, um, you know, Brad did for a few years been said, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I see, I watch, I know, you know, and for all the young drivers here, listen, that's the way it works, man. It's, you know, you, it too much is put emphasis is put on buying rides these days, but, you know, I had a car owner that, that, you know, he was, he was a stock car racer, but he was, he was recognizing whether it be in speed sport or, or social media that, you know, here I am winning races and, and, uh, you know, he kept saying, I'm going to get you in my car one day. I'm going to get you in my car one day. And, and, uh, you know, did I ever think it'd be, you know, it was a dream of mine, obviously running an ARCA car and, and, you know, finally one day, you know, he, he, the deal just worked out right. And he said, congratulations, you're my new driver. And, uh, and, and so we, there for, I don't know, two or three years, we ran, you know, all the ARCA dirt races and, and man, I, we ran top 10 every time it went. And, and, you know, I, I really felt like if we kept going, we were going to, we were on cracks and top fives, top threes, and even, you know, maybe when a, a dirt win. And, um, you know, unfortunately just the sad part is, is, uh, he went in for a routine knee knee surgery and, and didn't come out of it. And, um, you know, and, and we had plans, we were, we were preparing a car. We were, we were going to Michigan for the, the pavement race and, you know, things were, you know, who knows what happened from then, you know, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, he, he uh, he didn't make it through that surgery. And, and that was, you know, that was essentially the end of that deal. And, but you know, what, what are you going to do? Um, you know, great guy had great memories, some ways like a second father to me. And, and uh, you know, you're going to have that, you're going to have them, them setbacks. And, you know, I, I guess, as they say, it ain't, uh, you know, how you fall, it's how you get back up. So, uh, you know, and that's what we did, you know, so, um, so, you know, just, just awesome memories of, of racing the Arky cars. And even though they're big, slow turds, they're, they're still fun, you know, fun to drive. Well, and that brings me to my next thing. Um, I seen where uh, Chris Windham is going to be running the uh, cut dirt car um, at Bristol, which is coming up. Uh, and he said this quote, I, I don't even know where it was, but he said the closest thing to cup dirt for him in open wheel is silver crown. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, um, I, I think that's right. Uh, you know, what makes a good Silver Crown driver is a guy that can uh, keep the car straight, can serve his stuff. He's not, you know, he's not getting it out of control. He's not trying to put it in spots that it shouldn't be in. You know, you kind of eliminate, I mean, even though you run 160, 170 mile an hour, you're trying to be calculated on how you do it. And, and you know, you can't push early and you can't, you know, you got to know when to hold them, when to fold them. And, 
And, uh, you know, so I think that probably his experience, Chris is an excellent, excellent USAC Silver Crown driver. And all, honestly, Chris was, uh, I ran on the Arca Dirt with Chris too. So, you know, he's got experience on the Arca Dirt. He knows stock cars and, and uh, Chris is a very talented race car driver. Um, you know, I, I know he's going to run the, the Bristol race. I know that uh, um, I, who else is somebody else? Uh, uh, one of the guys from California. Yes, uh, I do. I do. I remember seeing them. Right. They just picked up with uh, Wood Waste. Wood, yeah. was it Wood yeah. Brothers? That, yeah. Uh, yeah, with uh, Matt Wood Racing or whatever. So, yes, yes. Um, yeah, so they're going to run. So, yeah, you know, I mean, there's a lot of technology they're probably going to give up by by doing what they're doing, you know, because I'm sure that that's not Hendrick Motorsports that they're getting their cars from. But, um, yeah, them, them boys shouldn't count them out because, uh, you know, nope. they're, they're, they're dirt superstars and they're going to figure out a way to be fast well and you, and you get you've got i mean you, you see just to jump over on that just a little bit you know i'm glad to see that that bristol put dirt on the track again this year it's been a long time uh, but you've got you know christopher bell who's already already picked up his first cup win this year um kyle larson uh chase briscoe um yeah. you know you've got uh, keselowski mm-hmm. trying to test out the late models a little bit get him logano went and got him uh, modified so I'm really pumped up to see that. And I, I, I know that it's something that uh, Tony Stewart has always wanted to see and always wanted to, um, unfortunately, didn't get to really have it at his track. But uh, in any event, it's, it's, it's here and, the, and we're going to get to see it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I, I don't think you can take anything away from Tony because, uh, you know, Tony's Tony's putting Eldor out there and preparing it and doing what he did for the truck series, honestly, probably opened the doors. Um, you know, to this deal. And, and obviously they're going to run Knoxville. And so it opened the door to that. And, and uh, you know, Tony, Tony's done an excellent job. Uh, you know, Tony is, is, you know, obviously a hero of mine. And, and I've, I'm fortunate enough to own in my museum, own a, a, at least one of Tony's race cars. And so um, I actually own two. And, and um, so, yeah, t- Tony's been super for the sport and, and, you know, really just kind of tying in grassroots and, and dirt, racing whether it be stock car open wheel international level racing and and the fan base that they've got and you know so um really looking forward to how this still plays out i mean i i think it's got the potential uh to to have a feel like it did back in the 40s and 50s when the moonshiners ran you know you could i mean we could be looking up and and you know i i think that they've got to see that it's going to be a successful you know successful venture and uh you know, I, I it, any dirt racing, man, it's just, uh, you know, it opens up the door for a lot of people, a lot of for sponsorship and uh, yeah. that line getting uh, race car drivers uh, like Christopher Bell, you know, Chase Briscoe, Kyle Larson, those guys up to that level. Well, and, and, and like you said, I mean, I, I really think that it's going to it's going to be something big for the sport. Everybody's just, you know, especially this last year with COVID, I think everybody really turned to dirt and with the new uh the flow racings and the three, five, seven world of dirt and, and dirt vision and, and all these platforms that you can go on and you can watch dirt racing uh, this last three weekends. I mean, that you could tune in and watch every single ounce of the, the, the Ducoin indoor, which I think is great and, and definitely going to bring a lot of fans into the sport. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, the flow racing three, five, seven, I mean, no matter where you look, you're getting good updates, you're getting live video, you're getting, you know, uh, streams of races and, and, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been huge for, for the dirt market and, and will continue to be, um, you know, I think those, those guys are kind of going to be on the ground level of, of, you know, what more sports is going to be from here on out. So, um, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of little kids watching them. There's a lot of little kids watch those videos, to, uh, you know, watch uh, podcasts like this and, you know, and, and, you know, hopefully, like I said, we can, we can give them some ideas, help them out. And, uh, you know, one day we're, or when we're old geezers, we'll, we'll be able to sit back and watch some of these kids shine and, and impress us, you know. That's definitely something we've been looking into. Uh, uh, I know Tyler Russ and, and myself and Cody have talked and we, we've, we've actually looked at the, to doing some really good things with the kids. Um, we've enjoyed the interviews that we've had with the kids and it's just such a fun time to, to, to get in and get them involved. I got little ones coming up. That that's what they want to do. So, but you've got, you've got your, your silver crown going, but what a lot of people don't know, I mean, people that follow you on, on Twitter and on Facebook can see it, but you run actually run a sprint car in Indiana for um, you want to let us know the 24 P. 
Yeah. So, uh, Jamie, Michelle, Paul, um, you know, they're, they're, uh, you know, funny story is, you know, he, he's got a real job, but what he's really, he's a miniature donkey farmer. They are, uh, they raise, uh, breed and raise miniature donkeys. Um, of course, you know, there's a market out there, them, them, them fairs use them and, and, uh, they're really awesome, awesome animals. And so, <laughs> so it's, it's high aspirations farms, and, uh, you know, and, and so that's what he does during the week. And, and he's a man, you want to talk about a purebred, uh, lover of sprint car racing. Um, you know, he always, I tell you what, I mean, I, I'll knock on wood when I say it, but you know, we've been going through, since 2016 and I don't know that we've ever fell out of a race due to mechanical issues. He's a mechanic by trade. And, and so, you know, just super people always look forward to going on Saturdays, uh, with them. They're from Ohio. Obviously I'm from Illinois. So, you know, they're making a three plus hour trek. I'm making a three plus hour trek and we're meeting in the middle and, and, uh, you know, and every week, you know, and we're doing it most Fridays, almost all Saturdays, some Sundays. And um, so I, I, I load up, I'm out of the firehouse at noon on, set, on Friday and uh, on the way to Indiana. And we spend uh, Friday, Saturday and some Sundays in Indiana with them. So uh, def, definitely family. That sounds like a really, I mean, I, I really like the car, that white frame and the blue soccer from blue i love that stuff um so and and we actually i just went through indiana and uh headed to ohio this week and and it was it was pretty cool to see you know the putnamville and the gas city and uh you know and so those are the those are the tracks that you guys run while you guys are over there yeah so we we run uh you know the bloomington bloomington kokomo gas city uh obviously been track champion lincoln park speedway which i love uh, Terre Haute, you know, that I tell you what, Indiana sprint car racing is Texas high school football. Um, it, it's its own thing. Uh, the families come out, the people come out, you know, you get up, you look up and the stands are full at all the tracks and, and, you know, honestly, even people that aren't associated with race cars, uh, that's what they do on Friday or Saturday night. And so, you know, you develop that, you know, and they, it's like anything else. They have their drivers they love. They have their drivers they hate. Uh, you know, you're going to go to a place and, you know, hell, they're liable to be fighting each other because, you know, you wrecked their driver, you know, or what's yep. them a dirty slide job, whatever. But, you know, they're just, they're so passionate, man. Indiana race fans are so passionate and, you know, and, and you know, they all got stories. Their, their dads, grandpas, you know, whatever they took them to the Indy 500 when they were little and, and, you know, they've, they've got their own story just like we do. Well, and that's the thing. And that's what I really miss about the, you know, the, the Mount Vernon track going down was, you know, there was so many good, that's, that's where everybody was at Saturday night. I mean, everybody went there and, and most of the time everybody went there uh, Sunday, got up, go to church and then left from church and went straight to a uh, hopstop, you know, and it was just a grind all weekend. And, and that's, that's really what I miss because I can remember going there and I had my favorite driver. And if I had somebody sitting beside me that was mouthing my favorite driver, you know how it is. And, and yeah. that's what I see when I, when I think of Lincoln and, and, and how you raced there in, uh, in, in Indiana. Yeah, you know, there, there's a part of it that, that I, that I, you know, the, the part of it that I don't like is, you know, here we are, you know, of course, I'm from Benton, Illinois, 20 miles south of me, we have SIR, which is one of the best micro tracks in the nation. Yes. Um, you know, I watch that, that them race on Saturday nights, and I can never be there, you know, but I watch the, them people grow with each other and, and treat each other well, and, you know, that's family, and they're there racing with each other every week. And, and I'm honestly, I'm jealous in that way because, um, you know, they got a cool thing going that they should keep doing. And, um, it's just weird that I, here I am from Benton, Illinois and, and, you know, probably, I mean, there's, we've got a lot of great race car drivers in our area, but, you know, I've just been lucky through, through luck, I guess, to be one of the more successful. And, uh, you know, here I am not, I don't get to take part in any of the Marion stuff, you know, and get to know those people that, you know, but it is what it is. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm over in Indiana doing battle and trying to at least bring back hardware and give them, give the Southern Illinois something to be proud of. So I guess we'll just have to wait until the, uh, the whole, um, the blue and, and white 24 P quits running before we can see you in a micro at, uh, Illinois, uh, Southern Illinois then, huh? Yeah. I think, uh, you know, when I talked about my retirement plans, um, which, you know, retirement for race car driver can be a lot sooner than retirement in, in your career. Uh, I, I, you know, I think SIR has, has got a place in there for me. So, um, kind of, kind of looking forward to that. And, and, 
you know, when things slow down a little bit. But, you know, hell, right now, I man, I'll tell you, I, I've always said as long as my stock's up, as long as, you know, when I say that, um, you know, as long as my, my driving career, I'm still winning races and, and I feel like I'm making advancements in my career and I'm not just trying to hang on and be that be that old guy that, you know, is is there running 15th in Indiana every week. As long as I'm winning races, I'm going to stay doing it. But uh, when I start seeing these these little kids that are, you know, 15 16 18 years old blowing my doors off i think i'll be ready to come back yeah there you go and then uh so i mean so that, that runs into you know the silver crown that you got coming up this year you mentioned in the last episode that uh you've got a uh not a new team but a a new team yeah yeah i got so uh we've had a, a local guy uh, ben clements uh, ben's lawn service here in benton uh which you know he a uh, fabulous super guy and and um, you know, as a big, one of the largest uh, zero turn dealerships here in, in the Southern Illinois area and Illinois in general, probably tri-state area. And, and uh, I guess this is the plug. If you need a lawnmower for the summer, make sure you get down to Ben's Lawn Service because as they support me, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, how that goes. That's, that's what I do. But, um, you know, he's been super excellent for what we do and, and uh, has come on and we brought the whole Hardy boys team together and, and they all know what they're doing and, and he's jumped in. And so we're building a brand new race car, got a new Kistler engine, new Maxim chassis. And, and uh, you know, I think we're all just kind of loaded for bear. I think this is going to be our year. Right. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to mean that with the, the lawnmowers is uh, we, we have a lawnmower company that sponsors this podcast as well. So oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess we're just bouncing the plugs off, off of them. Um, uh, a lot of people are going to be shopping for them anyways here in the next, there's, there's plenty to go around, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you got, you got the new, the new team, the new motor, uh, a new Maxim chassis. Um, but I thought I seen in, in a, in a picture or something, there was more than one car in there. Yeah, so I still own uh, I still own the, the car that I won in 2014, the Ted Horn 100, uh, which we've nicknamed Ginger. Uh, that's where Silver Crown cars get their own names, and and then the one in 15 that I won, Terre Haute and Ducoin, which was I bought it from Tony Stewart, and it was a TSR car that Levi Jones had won four national championships with, and um, that car behind you there. Yeah, it's sort of the car behind me has got the red Chevy uh, livery and, and the one there had the blue GM performance um, gotcha. livery on it. It also had the red before that, but it ended its career at, with the blue. And um, so, yeah, so I got those two in there and then got this brand new car. And, you know, obviously my goal, um, you know, I'm, I got my fire scanner. Sorry, but my I got my goal is to restore race cars, you know. Well, I've seen you got you got quite a bit back there, and uh, you know I look, I look, we look forward to um, getting to see some in depth looks at them. A couple of things I want to talk to you before we get into the cars there behind you. Uh, you got a pretty nice little museum there, um, but uh, let's go back because I know a lot of people want to hear about um, some of the, your Chili Bowl stuff. So what was what was some of the, your your best and favorite years at the Chili Bowl? Yeah, my you know my Chili Bowl didn't start off that well. Um, very first time I ever went to Chili Bowl, Chili Bowl rookie, uh, start the heat race, go into turn one, jump a wheel, flip. Very first Chili Bowl. Didn't tear a thing up. I, You know, here I am. I'd prepared all winter long to be able to go, and, and they're upside down. And I said, you know, how bad is the car? I don't look that bad. Well, flip me over. And so they flipped me over and looked at it, and they said, son, I think you can go again. So we pushed it off, and it fired off, and – and we started back in eighth and went to third in the heat race and uh, ended up making prelim, prelim a main on my very first chili bowl ever. And I um, think I made it into the C main, you know, I think I ended up running like eighth or something in ninth in the feature and made it in the C main. And um, the best chili bowl I've had, I, you know, the A mains kind of eluded me been in the B main two, three, four times on Saturday night, you know, make the prelim a almost every time I missed it once or twice, but um you know, the best one I had, I was in the transfer spot in the B main running fifth with about three to go, me and Hodden Child and and Hodden Child bounced off the front straight wall, bounced down into me. And when he did, I don't know if something fell off, but it ripped the brake line off the right front. I'm sorry, it it, it broke broke something on his car come over and knock the brake line off the left front and we end up losing brakes and, uh, you know, end up having to pull off for the feature or, you know, before the B main was over. But but Chili Bowl, it's, it's a it's a love hate relationship. Well, I know that there was, I think, I think one of my best races watching you there, uh, me and my little girl was watching it one night and uh, it was 
one of the first years Matt started running like the D and C mains on there. And it was uh, your battle with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And, uh, you know, right at the end, I mean, it was like a last lap pass to get into the B main, I believe. And they're like, uh, no says, uh, I, I'm trying to remember what the announcer said. It was like uh, something about a sprint or a NASCAR guy. No says I, Mr. Shane Cockrum. And, and what it was, a, it was a good race. And anyways, for you to jump into the, uh, the B main that year. Yeah, it was probably Rob Klepper. If I, I know it sounds like something he'd say, but uh, yeah, we I I just I slid him through three and four for you know for on that white flag to win it, and and of course my only cool story to that is I I come off the track, and of course you're going up the hill, and and you know that's where the drama happens. If something's happening on the racetrack up at the top of the hill, that's where the drama happens. Yep. So I get to the top, and I'm getting ready to slow down. And I look over, and there's Danica Patrick flipping me off, and of course. Oh. Her, her and Ricky were dating at the time. And of course, you know, she, I mean, obviously she knows racing. She's made it to higher places than I have, but I don't think she quite understood slide jobs. And, you know, to her, I, that her and Ricky were early on. And I think in her eyes, she, that I drove Ricky dirty, you know, so here I come up the ramp and all she is giving me the bird, you know, and, and uh, so that's, you know, that's my claim to Danica Patrick fame, I guess. Well, well, and maybe that's why, uh, maybe that's why she broke up with him. She's like, you can't even make it out of, out of B main. It's Shane Cochran's coming from Illinois and beating you. So I'm done with you. She moved on Green Bay Packers, I guess. So yeah, uh, yeah. that's fun. Deal. What's, what's one thing that, uh, that you, that you've not raced or a big race that you have not raced in that you want to? Well, I, you know, I think I want to do the Knoxville nationals. Um, you know, I, I'd like to do a little more wing car racing, although I don't know if, you know, my age and, and bravery, uh, you know, quite fits in at the right point in my life for wing car racing. But, you know, then again, I guess, as, as a lot of uh, us non-wingers say, uh, them wings, that's just training wheels. So, um, you know, it seems to seems to be just a cushion for when you crash and don't hurt near as bad. So I don't know. That's that's kind of my goal. I'd love to run Knoxville and and, uh, you know, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll tell you what, if I die tomorrow, I don't know that I have any regrets. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm appreciative for everything I've got to do. And, and, you know, I, I I'm, I'm happy. Maybe I've just settled in. I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I, I and you know, I, it's easy just sit and think about what you don't have, but it's, you know, uh, to me, it's a lot better to appreciate what you have. If you had to pick one super fan that you have that buys all your t-shirts and that follows you around, who would it be? Uh, I would have to say probably Casey Ryan. <laughs> well, I was going to go with that too. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've got a lot of young ones that, that, uh, you know, I, I think I race clean and, you know, I'm not crashing anybody. And so, you know, I, there's a lot of young ones and, and, you know, I try to be personable and, and at the racetrack and, and, you know, act as professional as possible. And, and uh, so, you know, I, I try to be a good, you know, for the moms and dads out there, bring their little kid. I want them to be the type that can come over my trailer and feel comfortable, but um, yeah, you know, Casey, uh, he's from hometown and, and I've known Casey for a long time and, 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 you know, just, he's just a good old boy, you know? And, and so, you know, I, I hear a few years ago, I give him one of my helmets and, um, so, you know, I, I occasionally, whenever, uh, the boys are out having a good time, him and his buddies, I'll get a Snapchat where he's hooting and hollering and, you know, uh, you know, kind of raising hell and he's got my helmet on. So I, 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 we're saying we're always at 12, one o'clock in the morning when I, when I open my Snapchat and there he is. So it's, uh, he's, he's a good dude. Uh, you know, he, he said that he asked me, he's like, well, if you need a t-shirt, you get one. I used to have one of your t-shirts and actually, um, I got to thinking about today, and I guess it's been so many years I forgot where it was even at. Um, but it was the year you won a silver crown race at Ducoin. I was in the stand with a little guy, and I bet him your T-shirt, uh, and and sure enough, you won. You and so he got the T-shirt. I guess, huh? Yeah. Well, he said he said uh, I forgot who he was even racing against that race. It's been so long ago, and. Uh, I don't know what was so good about I don't know what the best part of that night was. Uh, you went in, um, you gaining a new fan, or my wife uh, watching me walk out of the Corn State Fair with a 10-year-old's T-shirt on. I mean, it was uh, – <laughs> I'm sure she didn't – she was real proud of me. Um, yeah. But moving on, you've got some stuff in the background there. Uh, you want to show us some of the, the, the cool cars and maybe a, a story behind each one of them? Yeah. So, you know, here's what I, since I, you know, not, I haven't been keeping race cars in my shop, which I have a different shop for race cars. Um, 
Um, I've kind of, my passion has always been uh, historical motorsports. And, and, uh, you know, I know, of course, growing up with my dad, you know, racing in the seventies, I got in eighties, I got to hear a lot of the stories and, you know, he was fortunate enough to start his racing career in non uh, cage cars and, and then come up and into cage and, and race with all the greats. So, you know, I, I'm just, here's, I guess my thing is, I, I say passion led me here. Um, I love the old stuff. I love that, you know, and there were some them them boys or, or men I should say they 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 played for keeps and and you know I think we all owe them a lot of credit for the reason why we're all here and, and doing what we do today. So um, you know as as some of those owners them guys that's had them race cars and gotten older, um, you know there's got to be somebody to fill them shoes to keep them stories going. You know we're every day that we lose a, a, an old crew chief or an old driver. Uh, we lose a million stories that that are awesome stories uh, with them, you know. And so, um, you know, I, I started kind of collecting some race cars a while back. And and just here in the last year or two, I've been able to get a, a shop here that I can kind of bring them all together and bring a lot of my memorabilia together. So, uh, you know, if you don't care, I'm going to grab this computer. I'll just walk you around my shop and show you a few, few what I got. Now, I will say I've got five or six in here. I've got three or four more I'm restoring. And I just got one today haven't seen it yet haven't got it i can't reveal what it is but um it it was probably will become the most prized possession um but i'm but i'm not able to reveal yet it's going to be a couple months before i get it and and uh but it's it's uh it's it's a pretty awesome piece so uh, well, hopefully I'll, you'll have it by uh, september yeah i think so i think so so as everybody can uh see I'll kind of walk you around. Of course, uh, you know, we do the big screen. Um, got a lot of cool things. Got Sammy Swindell's uh, hood off his TMC car up there, as you can, as you can see, and uh, the real deal. And, and uh, just a lot of pictures. Of course, been fortunate enough to get a few big checks, and so those are always cool. You got to hang them on the wall and uh, kind of a, a magazine article that I was uh, featured in, and, and so got that. And a um, few driver racing suits that, that – you know, I've collected, this one's been an Indy 500 victory lane, and this is Arnie Knepper's, this is Carl Bussens, um, you know, from back in the 60s. Of course, uh, got, a, got a rear wing from, from a uh, um, Indy car that Gordon Johncock that won the 500, and, and uh, then, of course, one of these cool cars, this is uh, Chuck Amati's Super Modified from the late 60s. Uh, him wow. and my dad were arch nemesis during the 60s. They raced each other a lot, and so you know, back in the sixties, that's what you ran. And, and that's, that's what was, was made popular here in Southern Illinois. And uh, of course I was able to pick up here a few years ago, the Carl Busson 1960 sprint car. Uh, of course, you know, as you can notice, it's got no roll cage on it. And uh, these boys, they played for keeps. Carl actually lost uh, multiple fingers in this car in a wreck in 1964 in Florida. Um, still got all the same stuff in it. I've got his driving suit, got some memorabilia on the wall, still talk to Carl quite a bit. And he's, he's super pumped that I've got it. And I'm kind of sharing stories. And, um, of course, probably a little more, uh, you know, a little more out of my wheelhouse stock car, but still just a really a badass piece is, is this is one of AJ Foyt's last Winston cup cars. It's complete, has a motor. Oh, wow. in it. This, uh, this car actually what in 1991, uh, went to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for a tire test and is given credit to be the first Winston Cup car on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Wow. So it's, like I said, it's it's complete. You can actually, you Google, you'll find this car all over. And uh, there's actually a die cast car of this car. And what, what kind of makes this car special is because he took it and did tire tests. And it ran the 1990 and 91 Daytona and Talladega 500s. But um, when they did it for this tire test and all that stuff, they didn't put any contingency decals on it. So even the, the die cast car of this doesn't have any contingency decals. Uh, of course, I got a lot of memorabilia up on the wall, some, the AJ Foyt panels, this 37 car here. It's a, a 1986 uh, Adkins McQueen car. This thing for, through the 80s and early 90s uh, ran all over at all the USAC events. Uh, Johnny Parsons, Jack Hoddenchild, Stan Fox, Jack Hewitt, Stevie Reeves, Ricky Hood, Andy Hillenberg. I mean, there's all kinds of Hall of Fame drivers that have driven this car. Uh, this car was even owned by A.J. Foyt. Um, A.J. had it and, and owned it through a couple seasons and, and was able to, uh, you know, so I, it's kind of cool. I got two pieces 
of, of rolling stock that AJ owned. Uh, one of my latest here is uh, I was fortunate enough, me and Levi Jones are good friends and, and uh, Levi was able to get to me, Levi and Tony Stewart's 2007 USAC national championship car. Um, so this is a pretty awesome piece, uh, pretty much complete, just the way they raced it, uh, you know, and so it's, it's here. Matter of fact, it spent the last three or four months in, uh, well, I take it back last year, it's been in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum. And it's been there for quite a while. So we were able to get it here. And, uh, you know, so I, I kind of take care of it. But, you know, as you can see, I've got, we've got a little bit of everything in here. I've got uh, a, a nice bar that our buddies all came out. We, we shoot, uh, you know, shoot the shit and talk racing and uh, some video games we challenge each other on. And, of course, back behind here, uh, you'll see I've got uh, the Ted Horn championship trophies, some Ted Horn winning trophies. Um, first checkered flag from Ducoin Ted Horn, a Sumar Classic trophy. Uh, I've got one of my dad's old uniforms. I got, if you can see that orange piece up there on the wall, that's actually the hood off of Jeff Gordon's uh, Silver Crown car when he went completely through the wall at Ducoin in 1990. Um, I, you wow. know, being a little kid, I went and got it. I took it over to Jeff. Of course, Jeff's on his way up through his career. Took it over to him. He autographed it for me, and so uh, it's kind of cool. Got an AJ Foyt helmet. Uh, a couple old 1960s helmets, a couple pieces off my dad's old race cars. And, you know, so you can see we've just uh, we've kind of got a collection. Um, you know, we've we've just been kind of got a little A.J. Foyt uh, special edition uh, go kart, And um, so, you know, we, we really just we've got a lot of cool stuff and and we're adding all the time. And, um, you know, the, the hope is that uh, here as we you know move into the next racing season, we're going to have uh, maybe. Uh, I know Jack Hewitt's called me. I know Johnny Parsons called me. I talked to Tom Bigelow a lot and, and some of those legends. We're going to have a deal maybe before DuCoin where we get some race cars down and, and do a vintage deal, uh, have a barbecue here, and, and uh, maybe put the microphone in those guys' face, let them sit, put some chairs out, and let them tell some just some awesome stories. So, um, you know, about how it was and how it is and really, you know, so we can all appreciate what the history has been. Absolutely. And, and like you said, you know, uh, every time someone passes, that's a million memories that uh, stories that are untold. Um, and I, I guarantee that uh, there's a million plus memories uh, of, of things that if some of them uh, artifacts that you have in your shop can talk. Um, I tell you what, I, I know I wouldn't want to leave. I'd want to sit there and, and, and take it all in. So uh, that's phenomenal. That's that that uh, that you've got all that and, and that it's a piece of history and that it's definitely something that uh, I look forward to, to, to seeing more of and, and can't wait to unveil that one. I can't wait for the, the guys to show up there. Um, I know uh, I'm looking forward to especially getting talk with with Jack and Bigelow and then and KO and, and them guys. So um, but you know what, Shane, I. Don't want to take up uh, any more of your time. I know this has went into a part two segment, which was totally fine. I think everybody's really going to enjoy this. Uh, I just want to tell you, thank you for uh, for uh, coming on the show and uh, being our second guest and, and, and inviting us into your shop. Yeah, no, thank you guys. I uh, certainly appreciate what you do. Um, you know, I, I, I think uh, for, for a lot of these young kids to, to have people they look up to and heroes, they got to, they got to know some of the backstory. I mean, uh, you know, we're, we all humans and, and uh, we, we have cool stories and, you know, just the same as me and you, we're trying to, you're promoting me and trying to help tell some stories. You know, I'm trying to still tell some for, you know, some of the older drivers, some of the guys of, of yesteryear and, and uh, you know, that's what we want to do, man. Every race, car driver every race car it's got a story and and so you know it, it's our job to to promote that and get get people out and, and learn about our our history and motorsports and um you know we really got an awesome thing and we got to keep it going yeah and I, I i'm looking forward to a lot more stories that we've got coming up i know we've got a few more guests that's uh, scheduled to come up here that's going to have some some interesting stories to, you know to say the least so uh but with that uh we sure appreciate it and uh good luck this year in your 2021 driving the 24p good luck at your silver crown and uh, everything else that you get involved in yeah no doubt thanks guys we'll uh, see you in victory lane